Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'll show you how to change both horizontal and vertical text to fit any shape using Envelope Distort in Adobe Illustrator. And while there are dozens of tutorials about using Envelope Distort, what's different about this one is I'll show you a foolproof method to get uniform spacing around and between your words so you end up with results that look neat and professional. So let's move to a new document and get started. I'll get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and click on the artboard to get the rectangle dialog box and type in 12 inches for the width, tab down and type in 8 inches for the height, and say OK. Then I'll change the fill color to a light brown, and I'm going to leave a one point stroke. While this is selected, I'll come up to Object, down to Path, over and down to Offset Path, and I have a setting already of minus 0.25 inches for the offset. I'm going to leave that setting and say OK. Then I'll change the color to a light yellow. Really doesn't matter what the color is, we're going to change it in a few minutes anyway. While the yellow rectangle is selected, I'll go back up to Object, down to Path, and we'll click on Offset Path one more time. Leave the setting at minus 0.25 inches. Say OK and change this last rectangle to black. Now the black rectangle is actually where I'm going to be placing my words. So I've got to create the divisions where I want them to appear. So I'm going to do that using the Eraser tool. Now we find the Eraser tool on the left toolbar underneath the scissors tool. So I'll press down and hold with my mouse and in the flyout menu I'll choose eraser tool. The keyboard shortcut is shift E. Now my cursor has a circle following it. That's the size of my eraser and is actually a little smaller than I want because I'd like it to be the same width as the space between the brown rectangle and the black. So I'm going to place it here right in the middle of that yellow space and I'm going to press down on the right bracket on my keyboard and each time I press I increase the size of my eraser by one point and I'll keep pressing in increments of one point until I have the size I want. Next, with only the black rectangle selected, I'm going to draw out a smooth and wavy wiggly line. So I'll just do this with my mouse. Then I'll divide this piece here because I'll have two words up here. And I like to have extra space in between my words. So I'll come right next to this and just drag out another line here and here. All right, I think that's going to work. Next, I'll get the Type tool, Keyboard Shortcut T, and click on the artboard for some placeholder text. I'll use Myriad Pro Bold. It's a very simple, straightforward type, and you can experiment with others if you want to, but the one thing I do highly recommend is you use all capital letters. That way, all of the letters are the same height, and they fit better into your design. I'll get the Selection tool. Keyboard shortcut V and hold the shift key down. I'm going to increase the size of my placeholder text and then I'll highlight it and with the cap lock down, type in back and get the selection tool again. Hold down the option key to make a copy and this time we'll type in school. Now I'll go over to the left toolbar and press on the type tool with my mouse and that brings the flyout menu and I'm going to choose the vertical type tool. Click on the artboard for some placeholder text and type in 2. Then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, hold down the shift key and drag this out for a better look. Now what I've discovered is when you're using vertical text in an envelope distort, you want your letters closer together. So I'll come over to the character area of the properties panel. Here's the little line that's got arrows at the top and the bottom. I'm going to have to get a negative number and I can just continue to click here or I'm going to type in minus 90 and hit the return key and see how that looks. It's really not close enough yet. 
I'm going to try minus 190 and see how that looks. I think I'm going to leave it at minus 190. Next, I'll move to the Layers panel and twirl this open. It's important that your letters are in layers underneath the pieces that they're going to be distorted into. So I'll come to the Layers panel. The word 2 is selected. I'll hold the Shift key down and select School and Back. And then I'm going to drag these under the layers that hold these black pieces. Another way to move your text to the back, and perhaps the simpler way, is to select all the text and use the keyboard shortcut Shift Command Left Bracket. Either way, don't skip this step or Envelope Distort isn't going to work. So now I'll select our first piece, hold down the Shift key so I can also select the word back and go to Object, down to Envelope Distort, and click on Make with Top Object. Then I'll select the next piece, hold the Shift key down to select the word, go to Object, Envelope Distort, Make with Top Object, and finally the last piece, hold down the Shift key to select School, Object, Envelope Distort, Make with Top Object. Then I'll hold the Shift key down to select all three of the words. Go up to Object, click on Expand, make sure Object and Fill are checked, and say OK. Now once they're expanded, I can change their color. So I'll go to the Properties panel, change this to white, and select the yellow, and change it to black. Now in my example, I had a white stroke around the chalkboard, and then I had a black stroke around the white stroke. So let's select the black again, go to the Appearance area, and click on this ellipsis to open the Appearance panel. I'm going to click on Add New Stroke, and change that to black, and increase the size to 3, and drag this down under the white stroke. If you want to learn more about using the Appearance Panel and adding extra strokes, I'll leave a link to a tutorial at the end of this video. I'll close this out and click on the artboard, and then select everything, group it, keyboard shortcut command G, and let's center it by clicking on Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center, and here is our final result. Now what I like about this method is the spacing around the tops and the sides is the same as the spacing in between these main letters. And yet, I've been strategic in between the horizontal and the vertical letters to add more space because I feel like it just makes it easier to read. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned some things about using the Envelope Distort in Adobe Illustrator. I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. And I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.